Hello, Elite Creators, and welcome to Elite Prints and Creations. If this is your first time here, I hope that you enjoy the contents of this video and will view some of my other videos and choose to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. If you are a subscriber, thank you for the support and welcome back. If you don't know who I am, I am Shakia. I also have a channel called Silaholics Anonymous, and I have a Facebook group called Silaholics Anonymous Silhouette Help. So I am more of your Silhouette Studio guru. Those are the that's where I'm most comfortable. I do use Photoshop and Illustrator um, quite often, but as far as teaching, it just comes off a little easier when I teach Silhouette Studio. So I tend to shy away from doing uh, tutorials in other programs. But I have been asked countless times, countless times, and especially um, more so recently because of the Super Bowl coming up and. Um, in some of the groups that I'm in, you know, they want to be able to make sales off of, you know, Super Bowl um, inspired apparel or just offerings and things like that. So I'm going to do a quick uh, video on one of the main questions I've been asked, and it's about feathering out the bottom of a picture, like if it's something that's just cut off. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open. Um, now, I could have done this in um, Photoshop, but I use remove.bg to remove the background of this image. So I'm just going to go to that one and open that up. All right. And so then, well, the other question I get is, you know, how do I combine images? How do I bring them in? So we're going to go file, place embedded, and I'm going to find my other one that I had. Let's go to uh, downloads. Well, no, we don't download. Put a quick access. And there's my background that I want. So that's going to pull that in to this, um, to this same project. Okay. I'm going to position it there and I'm going to just size it up to where it is the same or covering the whole box. Let's move this around to where it's like centered, maybe even off to the side. So I can, you know, move this one around a little bit. All right, I'm going to hit enter. It'll be there. Of course, I don't want it by, um, in front of my, my the image of my player. So I'm going to click on it, drag it down underneath. So now he's on top, All right? A couple different things that you can do to feather out the bottom, like if you want a faded look. I'm going to hold down shift, click on layer, and I'm going to duplicate this. And we're going to turn those off. All right, I want you guys to see when I feather. So I'm going to add a layer and I'm just going to make it black. And I'm going to bring that down to the bottom. All right, so you can use your eraser tool. Now with using your eraser tool, you are going to fully erase the pixels of the image. So if you like erase too much, you're not going to be able to bring it back. You would have to basically undo and then redo it again. But I am going to show you how to do that because sometimes, you know, if you're very confident in what you want to erase, you can definitely use your eraser tool. So that's the one right here. The one thing I love about Photoshop, you hover over it. It gives you a quick preview of exactly what it is. So we're going to click on the eraser tool. We're going to come up to the top and the size can be very small. When you're trying to feather, it's better if you have a bigger eraser size. So I'm going to just take it up a little bit. If you, oh, I'm on the wrong one. So I'm going to go and click on here and see, it gives me kind of the size. I'm going to click here and go back down. You know, you can always bring your mouse over to kind of preview the size of your brush and or eraser. My hardness, I want it at zero because I just want a really soft, um, erase on it. And you have a bunch of presets here for soft erasers. That's a brush. This is a soft brush. Um, you have stamping and um, burning and things like that. So a couple different presets there. So I'm just going to swipe across and you can see how it basically fades to where it's, it took off a lot here, but towards the top of the eraser, it still leaves a little bit of the image. So it's, a, it's not a, another hard cutoff. It's starting to kind of feather it up. If I click on the uh, background image and I use the eraser on that, why is this not? Okay, there we go. All right, and I erase that. 
So you see, now my black is starting to show through. So if I go up a little higher on that, I have it to where that's there and it's almost like he's in front of it because, you know, he's blending into the into the black, All right? But like I said, this will make it to where I've erased it. So if I felt like, well, I erased too much of it, I want to bring it back, you know, you really can't, you know, you'll have to go ahead and undo. The other way that you can do this, I'm going to click on here, open these back up, rasterize this one. I'm going to add layer mask to these. So I'm going to click on the layer that I want to add the mask to. It's the icon with the box and the circle in the middle. It's going to put a box right to the side. Whenever you're making your changes, you want to make sure that you are clicked on the box because you can click on the image. And then if you go to um, your brush, you're just going to basically add cover over it. Color over it. We don't want to do that. All right. You want to be on your actual mask. So click on the mask. And the way that this works, if you have black, um, it conceals, white reveals. All right. So if I have it on the black and I erase across, you see, this is a sharp one. I don't have any, um, like my hardness on this will be all the way up. So I'm going to undo it. Um, well, you know what? Um, I'm going to do this way. But I want to show you if I flip this and flip the foreground color, I can bring that back very easily, unlike when we use the eraser tool. But I'm going to come up here. We're going to take my size down a little bit. I don't need it to be that big. Uh, well, before I do that, I'm going to click on the soft brush. It's at 81 pixels. Um, I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. My hardness is all the way down. All right. We're going to flip our foreground uh bring our background color back to the foreground. So black is on top and we're going to just brush out. Okay. And if I come to the bottom one and I go like this, right. And I'm going to go up a little bit on my brush size just so that it kind of fades a little bit more. Now let's say I'm like, okay, well, I think I, I couldn't, I kind of took off too much. I'm just going to flip it to the white and go back across and it will um, reveal that area back again. And then I can flip it again and let's go in like this. All right, I can do the edges. If I did not have this uh, fill color back here, that would end up being transparent. So you can even see how having certain colors, um, it makes it look, you know, you can see more of what's there. When there's it's transparent, you barely see that area. But if I were to come back here and we're going to go and switch it to white, I'm just kind of go in the middle and circle outward. I can get that, you know, that part back. I'm going to bring the black back. You can kind of see where that is. Um, let's flip it here and kind of just soften out those edges. All right. And again, if I take this off, you'll kind of see how that is set up. If I want to move him down, I'm going to hit V on my keyboard. I can move this one down some around. Um, if I were to put, oops, sorry, did not mean to do that. Control Z. I'm going to add a solid color and I'm just going to make it white. And you just kind of see how, you know, that would look with a white background. Uh, so that's in a nutshell how you can erase and feather away things to kind of make them blend. Now, there are so many different things that you can do after this point. You know, you can add shadows and glows and, you know, just different layer styles all together. But I get asked that one a lot as far as just how do I feather away the end? How do I make it to where it's not so um, harsh of an edge? And how can I get it to blend? Now, this will work with a brush like this. If you have um, specialty brushes that will have, um, you know, like real brush strokes, like towards the end and different things like that. But you want to do all those things on your mask and not necessarily on your image because you can always go back in there and change it up. All right.
Hopefully this helps. If you have any additional questions, do not hesitate to go ahead and post them as a comment below. I will try to do more Photoshop uh, type tutorials, like just quick tutorials. I don't think I'll ever do it to where I'm doing a full project. There are so many people um, out there and so many channels that do full projects. I will probably, if anything, just focus on specific tools. Um, if you're looking for a channel where you can see full on tutorials, innate labs, I N N A T E lab. Uh, Shannon does some um, wonderful things when it comes to showing you how to use templates and how you can just uh, switch them out. She has them available and things like that. She does great. I don't really have the patience to do full on Photoshop ones, you know, full on tutorials. Silhouette takes up a lot of my time, but I will try, like I said, we'll try and do small tutorials here and there. But hopefully this one helped you a little bit to get you started with uh, custom designing your projects for um, the Super Bowl. All right. Until next time, guys, have a great one.